Good morning, everybody. Everybody here, and everybody on Zoom, everybody on YouTube. This is uh, Pastor Larry with El Shaddai Christian Assembly, located at 1448 Greenwood Street here in Philadelphia. Our email address, if you want to get in touch with us, is office2210 at AOL.com. And if you would like to leave a message uh, via voicemail, it's 215-927-7188. We are glad you're here. Just want you to know that um, we're so glad that there's a reach beyond these four walls because the church, Iglesia, the called out ones are, are not just in four walls. I'm glad that social media, YouTube, Zoom, allows us to extend our reach. And it's not just the people here, it's people, families are listening to this and the words getting out. Not just, not just in this local area, it's, it's going out into, I saw somebody, a comment from somebody out in the, on the West Coast, and, and, so, and, and, and I think in the South somewhere as well. So it's not just here, and so your prayers, and you on, on, on YouTube, we can pray for you as well, here in, from, from here in Philadelphia, wherever you are. You send in your prayer requests uh, via email or, or, or whatever, and we will definitely pray for you because our God is an awesome God, He loves you, he loves us. We know it. We're learning about it. That's what we're going to learn more about it today, about how much he loves us. So if you'll um, buckle your seatbelts, we're going to talk a little bit about it. We're talking about something that is a foundational. Last week, and I'm going to give a, a brief overview of last week, but first I'm going to give the, the headline statement, which is what I gave last week, which is a, it was about God's love for us. And I shared about this man who had saw a photo of his father and the photo was damaged, and he wanted to, he said, you know, I'm going to fix this, so, you know, to make it look right. And he said, then he heard this voice that said, from Yahweh, the Father, and said, that's what I want you to do for other people so that they would know what I'm like. They would know what the Father's like. And the Father's like, what he's like is he's love. He's a, he's a loving God. And he wants our view of him to be correct. So let me read this. I'm going, to, I'm going to read this scripture here because I want you to understand why do we really need to know how much God loves us. And uh, let me just share this. It's in, found in John chapter 16, and it's verse 33. Listen to this. Verse 33 of John, actually I'm going to read in, uh, in verse uh, 32 and 33. John chapter 16, verse 32 and 33. And this is the Messiah talking to his disciples. He's, he's getting ready to leave here, so this is important. Everything he said was important, but it, I, I would say things can... Or, or like line upon line, precept upon precept. And I'm, this is even more important because his hour for his departure is, is, is coming near. And he says, look, verse 32, an hour is coming and has already come when you will be scattered each to his own home and you will leave me all alone. And then he goes, yet I am not alone because, why? Because the Father is with me. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And listen to this next verse. This is this next part of it. This is why you need to know, you need to know that you know in your knower, knowing this, that God loves you. Because in this world, you will have tribulation. This is what the Messiah is saying. He didn't say everything's going to be easy. He says, so things are going to come up against you. Why? Because you know me and you're loved by me. You're loved by the Father. That's why. That's the bottom line. That's the reason why. Is because you're loved by the Father. And the enemy would like nothing more than to, than to scatter you to cause you to be so distracted that you never look at what you got. Like I was saying earlier, like, like you won't even look at what's in your hand and allow the enemy, allow the Father to use that against the enemy. Because you would be so distracted. But that's what he would want for you. But this is what the, the Messiah wants for you. He says, he says, you will have tribulation. So I'm letting you, warning you in advance, letting you know in advance. He says, but you will have tribulation. But take courage. What's the courage in? In your strength, in your faithfulness, in your ability to read, in your ability to have instant recall of the, with the word of God. No, your, your faith is in the fact that, he says, but take courage, I have overcome the world. The God who loves you so much, the God who, he says, he loved the whole world. He sent his son here on our behalf to overcome the world. Now, what does that have to do with him loving you? Well, because he loves you so much, he sent his son here to overcome the world on your behalf. So that when tribulation comes, 
you can stand fast knowing that there's no temptation overtaking you but such as common to man. But with it, with that whatever's come upon you, you can you have the power, just like anybody else that's in, in Christ, in Yeshua, to overcome it, to withstand. That's why we need to know in our knower. Because everything doesn't always work out the way you want. Like the, 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 um, the, the, the guy doesn't always get the girl and ride off in the sunset. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you have tribulation. Sometimes things don't work out the way we planned. Because you have an enemy that, that hates you. And that puts family members or friends in front of you to distract you, to, to get you off, his, off the course of the Father that he has for you. He has a destiny for each of us. And we don't always achieve everything that we would like to do. We don't always achieve everything that he would like us to do. Why? Because we have our own will. He loves us so much that even with your own will, he won't stop loving you. Amen. Even when your will says, you know, today I don't feel like getting up and reading. I don't feel like kneeling down and praying. I don't feel like fasting. I don't feel like doing this. Today, and, and that does not diminish in one aspect his great love for you. And then even something that happens because of your own will, because of you did, made the wrong decision or, 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 or went the wrong way, even because it was you and you didn't take the time to listen to the Holy Spirit, he says, tribulation will come. He says, but even if you didn't do it right, be of good courage because I have overcome the world. I've overcome your mistakes. I've overcome your enemies. I've overcome your bad decisions. I've overcome the things you eat. I've overcome the places you go. I've overcome the money you spent. Listen, I can cause, I can cause time to be reversed on your behalf. I will restore what the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locusts have eaten. I will give you the former rain and the latter rain. Why? Because I love you so much, so you need to be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. I'm sorry, that's my opening statement. <laughs> Matthew chapter 3. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 3. We're going to get to, to the recap, and then we'll get to today's uh, part of it. But I, I get a little excited sometimes when I think about his love. You know, is it, what's that, how's that song go? When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, then my soul cries out, hallelujah, I thank God for saving me. So he's done so much for us. Yeah. And so it's good. We have a lot to be grateful for. Yeah. Yes. So I want to I read this real quickly. It's, it's in... And this is, again, my opening statement. I, I said, shared this a little bit last week, but I'm going into a little more detail when I said that, um, I said, Yahweh, before the Messiah went out, he said, he says, this is my beloved son. And I said, and I said, and so are you. But let, I was going to read a couple of scriptures about him. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, and it says, um, this is when Yeshua was being baptized by John the Baptist. Interesting that he would be the one baptizing, right? His last name is Bethlehem. Anyway, it says, um, as, soon as, as soon as Yeshua was baptized, he went up out of the water. Suddenly the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and resting on him. And then a voice came from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is the same one that said, Take courage, for I have overcome the world. He is well pleased. He's so pleased that he's going to make, this is what he wants. For everybody, you on YouTube, you in Zoom, you in this building, you in this neighborhood. He wants, he wants Christ to reside in you, the hope of glory. The one who he's well pleased in. The one who's overcome the world. He wants him to reside in you. Because it says in Romans 8, it says, Romans 8, 11, it says that, that the same power that raised Messiah, Yeshua, Christ, Hamashiach, raised him from the dead, is dwelling in you. That's his will for you. Why? Because he's well pleased in you too. He's so pleased in you, not because of what you've done. He's so pleased that you made a decision to allow him to be your father. He says he's given you, you've, he's, he's given you 
the ability or the power to become his sons and daughters. And so he's so pleased that you're his sons and his daughters. Yeah. Not because of your ability or, your, or your, um, your performance. He's just pleased in the relationship. So pleased that he's invested in you. Yeah. Invested his spirit on the inside of you, which is his power. Invested his son to live in you, yes. to dwell in you. And then, then if that wasn't enough, he says, not only that, I need you. I don't want you just to be, your spirit to be righteous. I need your spirit to be seated together with me yes. in heavenly places, yes. in my son who I'm well pleased in. That's the God that loves you. Yes. You know, somebody that's willing to do all that, that, that God loves you. Yes. You know, and when you know that he loves you, when, when, when tribulation comes, you don't shrink like a violet. You're able to take courage and know that you, hey, you might cry. You might even have to sit down for a minute. But you can still take courage. How do you do that? By, by just like how David encouraged himself in the Lord. You start reminding yourself of these things that this God who's well pleased in you has done for you on your behalf in the past. Things that he's done for other people should encourage you as well. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. So and I want to also read in Luke chapter 3. It's the same account, just slightly different. And I want to read that because that showed me something else. I tell you, every time I read the scripture, and it just, it just opens up again and again. And then he will just show me stuff whenever I'm able to be quiet. Why? Because he's well pleased. He'll show me stuff, not just because he's just well pleased with me, because he's well pleased with you. He shows me stuff that I can also share with you, because he's well pleased. In, it's just like this. It's like it just gets strengthened more and more. Because, you know, why? Because two or three are gathered in his name. And he's here in our midst. And since he's in our midst, he says, you know, since I'm here, I may as well show off and show you how much I love you. He loved us so much, and I'm going to read this in a minute, but he loved us so much that we, we read uh, before in 1 Peter 2, 24, where it talks about he was hung on a tree and how, he, you know, for our sins. And, and he says, and also, he says he, he gave us righteousness, and he says, and we are healed by his stripes. Listen, I'm, I'm not a... a all I am is a reflector. So I'm going to reflect healing that comes from him right now. You're healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's not allowed to stay inside of you. Not allowed to stay in your body. Because why? Because you belong to him. He's well pleased with you. Amen? Amen. 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 Glory to God. So um, in uh, Luke chapter 3, verse 21 and 23, through 23. And I was, again, it's a similar, similar, it's the same account. Verse 21, it says, And when all the people were being baptized, Yeshua was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit, or the Ruach HaKadosh, descended on him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. And listen to this, verse 23. Yeshua himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. And this, I like this the way it reads in the Brian Study Bible. It says, remember, he, this is Yahweh's, I mean, Yahweh's son he's, we're talking about. But this is what here it says. It's, he was regarded as the son of Joseph. And then it goes on about the genealogy. Why am I showing you that part? Because he's into relationships. Even though Yahweh knew I'm the father, he, he didn't need to go on Mari Povich. Yahweh knew he was the father, right? But he says, I want him to be regarded as the son of Joseph. Why? So that I can bless that whole genealogy back and forth. Up and down. He says, and everybody else, anybody who ever believed, whoever wants to believe, I'm able to bless them because this is my point of contact. So I can say, you, and you I am well pleased. So all you need to do is you hook up with who he's well pleased with, and then it's, it's contagious. He's not just well pleased with him. If you get you get caught, you get yeah. you get the, the well pleased disease. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
So he's into relationships. And, and so now I'll do the recap. <laughs> we talked last week. I'm going I'm to do this as quick as I can. We talked about how um, the most important part of the building is the foundation. If you don't get the foundation right, the building's not going to work correctly. And we talked about grace and law. Grace versus law is a major part of the foundation. Love and that grace is why we're not under the law. Doesn't mean we don't do the things, but we do the things because of the love and the grace that we have. See, you couldn't perform yourself, you couldn't perform enough to become righteous. There's nothing you could do other than believe. So the grace is the believing grace through faith. And so we believe and we, that's what puts us in the position and changes who we, who we were into who we are now. I said we should value the foundation of any building, anything, any undertaking, the foundation we should value. Don't, don't, um, whatever, don't overlook small beginnings. I forget how that says, but small beginnings. You're thinking it's a small beginning, but it's the foundation you're laying. This is something, too, I said was, I believe is important. We're all one revelation away from transformation, from total transformation. You're one revelation away from total transformation. Of course, you have to be open to it. And our capacity or ability to love is because we know love. As a matter of fact, you can't give away what you don't have. If you don't know love and have love, you can't give it away. And we talked about being created in his image and his likeness. And it, this is what he looks like. He looks like love. And his likeness is he is love. So we're in his image and likeness. And so that's a, we have that capacity to look and act like him. And it says he was love from the beginning. He didn't become love. And then this is, then this is the last part of the recap. And, and we'll get into today's um, part of it, which is Yahweh wants nothing to stand between you and him. His great love, his great love. He says, he says, my name is jealous. He says that in the scripture. He wants nothing to stand between you and him. I think about that about, and for some reason I keep thinking of the, of the prodigal son where, where he saw him a long way off and he ran toward him, which wasn't supposed, that wasn't the culture. They weren't supposed to run. But he wanted nothing to stand between him and his son because of his great love for him. From a long way off, what that what that implies is that he was looking for him. He's always looking for you. Why? Because you are his beloved. What do you think he was walking walking in the garden looking for Adam? He wanted to hang with him. He wants that. He wants that. He's into relationship. So that was the um, that was the. the of our foundation statement and our recap. And so that statement I just said, which is you can't give away what you don't have. And we really, if we want to act like him, be like him, speak like him, get the results that he wants, love is that foundation. That's the first part. Why? Because it's being just like him. When it says imitate, imitate me as I am, follow me as I follow Christ. Yeah, and imitate him. He was love. Matter of fact, he showed me, he said something to me last week. He says, um, the Holy Spirit showed me, he says, he says, there's never been one person on this planet that I didn't love. Because when he said that statement, God so loved the world, in John 3 16, yeah. let me we'll read that. Let's start. But he said that, he said, he said, there's never been one person on this planet that I didn't love. And so I asked questions. So my question was, then, why did you say Esau have I hated and Jacob have I loved? See, I think of things. I, I think it's, stop acting like me. That's my sister. <laughs> she can't help herself. Anyway, but listen, I'm going to read John. It says, John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. See, that, he's... It sounds like contradictory statements. Like, but he loved, he said, there's never been one person on this planet that I did not love. Why? Number one is because he is love.
If I'm love, I, I can't help but love. And we're gonna get into we're gonna get into a little bit more on that about Esau and all that stuff. But but when I, I said that's a big statement. There's never been one person that you didn't love. Does that include Judas Iscariot, Adolf Hitler, Genghis Khan, other people? And he, and and you know that had they seconds before they died been introduced to Christ, their spirits would have been made righteous, because his love is bigger than any sin that you could commit. Any un His love is bigger than any unrighteousness that could exist. It would make you righteous. Why? Because his love is who he is. If he couldn't do it, that means he wasn't all-powerful. He's, he's God. He's all-powerful God. And he's love. He can do anything. People say except lie. That's, I believe that. But it, that's, all, that's hard, isn't it, to understand sometimes, like, when even people that have been, that we've judged so evil, have been so evil, his love and his righteousness can overpower that to such a point that they, their unrighteousness, all their acts, are just wiped away. That's love. You know, like, I'm sure um, Bonnie and Clyde had parents that loved them, or family that loved them, and people that hated them. But you have people that love them. Why? Because of the relationship. They didn't love them because of what they did. Even now, people that have, have they may have kids that are gangsters or druggies or whatever, or drug dealers. You think that means they stop loving them? Loving their kids? No. So why would the God who created us, who not just said you're loved, he says you are my beloved. There's nothing we could do that could stop him from loving you. So let's turn to Romans 9. This was a revelation, like I said to me. Romans 9, verse uh, 13. And, and you know, here's what the Holy Spirit, what he does is he'll, he'll tell me an answer before I look it up. You know, like, and I, so what, why, does he do, why does he do that? He does that so I can learn trust. That trust his word. Like, he'll t like, I'll say, well, something, something, you know, I'll say, and he'll tell me an answer, and then I'll find it in the word. He'll tell me, and he won't say, oh, go look at Romans 9, 13, and, and look in Strong's. He'll say, no, this is it. He said, when I said, well, now how, can, how can it be Jacob ever hated and Esau ever loved? He said, first of all, I can be against nations, but not against people. See, that's why Rahab the harlot was able to, to be saved. Even though their job, their task, their, their priority was to, to demolish Jericho down to the last stone. Yet he saved Rahab the harlot. Why? Because he didn't hate her. He hated the nation. Why? Here's why he, he hates nations. Because of groupthink. In other words, they just do, they, they go along. That's why the Tower of Babel was being built. And he had to come down and destroy it because of groupthink. See, groupthink is in relationship. You follow what I'm saying? If you follow the crowd, that's what he hates, not the people. He hates you following the crowd, allowing the crowd to be your influencer. You know, that Nazi Germany, everybody in Germany wasn't a Nazi. You know, there were churches in, in Germany, they were, like Dietrich Bonhoeffer was, was a, a pastor that was trying to get all the churches together to, 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 um, to, to resist. Put the, resist Hitler. And, but because they didn't resist, they went along with the group thing. You know, they, they would hear the trains going by or, or the transportation taking the people to the gas chambers, and they would say, we need to sing louder so that we don't hear these noises. <coughs> Why? Because of group think, and Yahweh hates that. I'm not trying to bring it down there, but I'm just trying to give you an example of, of group think going along with the group. He says, look, if, if, those, if those people, parishioners, have re remembered John 16, 33, where it says, in this world you will suffer tribulation or you will face tribulation. He says another area where it says persecution, but there will be tribulation. He says, but take courage to go against the group, to go against the grain. 
rub the cat the wrong way. See, you know, the fur going the wrong way. See, here's the problem. If you don't run into tribulation coming from the devil, you could be going the same way. This is for the people on, on YouTube, not in here. If you're not running into tribulation from occasionally or, or, or problems, either you're going with the group, which is going with the, with the enemy, because he's the, the prince of the power of the air, and so you're going the wrong way. It's when, you, when you're going the right way, like a salmon swimming upstream. Like I heard a, a, a teacher say, um, a dead fish can float downstream. Currents taking them, group think, and they're dead. A live fish will use their brain, their mind, their own will, because he gave you the, the greatest gift besides the li eternal life, which is to be able, the ability to make a decision, the ability to have your own will, to make a decision, to say, I will. So Romans 9, verse 13. It says, verse 13, So it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. And I'm like, then how can that, how can you love the whole world <coughs> and you hate Esau? Well, Esau represents the Edomites, which is a nation. And there's something specific about this as well. Let's look up in the, in the Strongs for the word loved. Agapo, to love. I love, this is how you use it. I wish you well, I take pleasure in, long for, denotes the love of reason and esteem. To love. Let's look up the word for hate. Esau, I hate it. And that word is, the Greek word is miseo. And it means to hate. But listen to this. It says, to, 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 to detest, denounce, to love someone or something less than someone else, to renounce one choice in favor of another. To renounce one choice in favor of another. See, he didn't hate them the way we would define hate. But he hates what they did. And you, we're going to see, read a couple of scriptures that show you that he's into relationships. He still blessed Esau and Edom, even though they did some, some pretty nasty things. Let's turn to Numbers chapter 20. I'll tell you, Yahweh is very wise, knows what he's doing. Knows how to help you and bless you. In verse 14, this is when Israel was, was leaving Egypt. And they, they're asking for passage. From Kadesh, verse 14. From Kadesh, Moses sent messengers to tell the king of Edom, this is what your brother, listen, this is what your brother Israel says. Remember I said Esau? was that's Edomites came from Esau. This is what your brother Israel says. You know all the hardship that has befallen us, how our fathers went down to Egypt, where we lived many years. The Egyptians mistreated us and our fathers. And when we cried out to the Lord, he heard our voice, sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. Now look, we are in Kadesh, a city on the edge of your territory. Please let us pass through your land. We will not cut through any field or vineyard or drink water from any well. We will stay on the king's highway. We will not turn to the right or to the left until we, have, until we have passed through your territory. But Edom answered, You may not travel through our land, or we will come out and confront you with the sword. I told you God's into relationships. This, this bothered him. This bothered the father. It's, you'll see that later, but that bothered him. It says, um, he says, where were they? Were, Oh, verse 19, it says, We will stay on the main road, the Israelites replied. And if we or our herds drink your water, we will pay for it. There will be no problem. Only let us pass through on foot. But Edom insisted, You may not pass through. 
And they came out to confront the Israelites with a large army and a strong hand. So Edom refused to allow Israel to pass through their territory, and Israel turned away from them. Now, there's an, this wasn't the only part of, of Edom. There was another part. We're in Mount Seir. We're going to read about that as well. But in this place, in this condition, or this situation, they wouldn't let their brother pass through. And that's probably why you don't really hear about Edomites today. You hear about Israel, but you don't hear about Edomites or Esau. The Edomites, they still exist, but you don't hear about them as a nation. A lot of them, they, they mix into Rome and some other places. And incidentally, Rome also persecuted Israel, didn't they? Interesting. But anyway, so you don't really hear about them as a nation today. Turn to Psalm 137. And you remember what, so why would they hate um, Israel? Remember when they came out of, uh, out of um, when Joseph, I mean, Jacob, all the money and the goats and all that stuff he gave them when he was leaving uh, Laban? You remember that in Genesis? When Jacob gave all this, all this stuff to him, to basically to, to, to bribe him, you know, to say, listen, no harm, no foul, I'm giving you all this stuff. And he took it, but he harbored this hate for his brother. Yahweh's into relationships. And the fact that he took all that stuff, received it from him, and still kept that in his heart, and passed it down into his generations, that they wouldn't let his brother's family. You know, that's also why that scripture isn't fulfilled through Edom or Esau and his family, where it says, when it says that, in you will all the nations of the earth be blessed. I believe that's what part of why. Because he, Esau was from Abraham. Basically, you see, he, Abraham, then Isaac, Isaac had Jacob and Esau. Esau's family didn't go into Egypt. And we aren't blessed as a result of them. Psalm 137. I'm read from verses 1 through 7. This is an interesting scripture, too. You, this is another more story, but I won't go into all this. It says, By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the willows we hung our harps. For there our captors requested a song. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. Sing us a song of Zion. Then there are answers. How can we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, may my right hand cease to function. May my tongue cling to you to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you. If I do not exalt Jerusalem as my greatest joy. And then listen to verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the sons of Edom. On the day Jerusalem fell, destroy it, they said. Tear it down to its foundations. This is what the Edomites did. This is years later, right? Do you know the Edomites also? They were blocking the children of Israel that were trying to escape from Jerusalem when they were being... Um, um, attacked by Babylon. I think they may have done it when Rome attacked as well. That's, a, that's some powerful hate. And that's why you don't hear about Edomites today. Because Yahweh's into relationships. Again, back to Esau. One, one other thing I want to mention about it is how he, um, he accepted all these gifts. He sold his birthright but tried to steal it back. Accepted all the gifts and still walked in hate. But look at what Yahweh's done. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 2. We're talking about a God who is love. And if he can love Edom and, and people, not the nation, he loves people. I'm going to read from verse 4 through 22. It's a lot, a lot of scripture. But listen, I want, it makes sense when you read it. It says, um, verse 4, And command the people, you will pass through the territory of your brothers, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir. Seir, S-E-I-R. That was a mountain. They will be afraid of you, so you must be very careful. Do not provoke them, for I will not give you any of their land, not even a footprint, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as his possession. You are to pay them in silver for the food you eat and the water you drink. 
Indeed, the Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this vast wilderness. The Lord your God has been with you these 40 years, and you have lacked nothing. So we passed by our brothers, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir, not the ones who near, were near Kadesh. We turned away from the Arab road, which comes up from Elath and Ezion Geber, and traveled along the road of the wilderness of Moab. And then the Lord said to me, Do not harass the Moabites or provoke them to war. For I will not give you any of their land, because I have given Ar to the descendants of Lot as their possession. Yahweh's in two relationships. The Moabites were from Lot. The Ammonites were from Lot. He's into relationships. Why? Because he loves. That's why. Verse 10. The Emites used to live there, a people great and many, as tall as the Anakites. Like the Anakites, they were also regarded as Rephium, though the Moabites called them Emites. The Horites used to live in Syria, but the descendants of Esau drove them out. They destroyed the Horites from before them and settled in their place, just as Israel did in the land that the Lord gave them as their possession. Now arise and cross over the book of Zered. So we crossed over the book of Zered. Verse 14. The time we spent traveling from Kadesh Barnea until we crossed over the book of Zered was 38 years, until that entire generation of fighting men had perished from the camp, as the Lord had sworn to them. Indeed, the Lord's hand was against them to eliminate them from the camp until they had all perished. Now, when all the fighting men among the people had died, the Lord said to me, Today, you're going to cross the border of Moab at Ar. But when you cl get close to the Ammonites, do not harass them or provoke them. For I will not give you any of the land of the Ammonites. I have given it to the descendants of Lot as their possession. That, too, was regarded as the land of the Rephaim, who used to live there, though the Ammonites called them Zamzumites. They are a people great and many, as tall as the Anakites. But listen, listen to this next. But the Lord destroyed them from before the Ammonites, who drove them out and settled them in their place, just as he had done for the descendants of Esau, who lived in Seir, when he destroyed the Horites from before them. They drove them out and have lived in their place to this day. Yahweh is into relationships. Even Abraham's nephew Lot, he blessed their, his descendants. And he wants to, and, and, and as long as they were doing right, Yahweh was able to bless them. But when Moab and the Ammonites started messing, doing their stuff against Israel, he took the kid's gloves, kid gloves off. But here he's trying to bless them. He said, look, we'd give them money as you go through, do this, blah, 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 blah. He said, don't, you know, just, but you can't have any other land. Because he loves, he loved Abraham. Matter of fact, let me just read a couple of things. Moses, this, I told you Yahweh is no um, respect to persons. Yet, Moses was called the greatest prophet. He was the same Moses that was unable to go into the promised land. Same Moses who killed an Egyptian before his time. Same Moses who struck the rock twice. Yet he, stopped, he talked to Moses face to face. This was even before the Messiah. Moses wasn't perfect before the Messiah, yet because of his great love, he's the one that buried Moses. David. Let's talk about Abraham. Abraham lied to Pharaoh, lied to Abimelech about Sarah being his sister, kicked his son Ishmael and his mom out, yet he was called a friend of God. God could love them, call him a friend of God. You know with his son, who is his beloved, living on the inside of you, what do you think he has for you? Glory to God. Yeah. Amen. David. Commit, same David who's called a man after God's own heart. Committed adultery with Bathsheba. Had her husband killed. Terrible father. Didn't discipline Absalom. Didn't do a lot of things right. But he was a man after God's own heart. God loved him. He said, I'll bless your seed forever. Didn't even have Jesus. That David, man after God's own heart, yet you are his beloved. Gideon, hiding in the, in the wheat press or threshing floor or whatever. 
Yet, what did God call him? Come up to him and he says, you mighty man of valor. Loved him so much that even when Gideon said, well, okay, well, how about I'll put my fleece out and let the ground around it be dry and the fleece wet. Okay, how about let the fleece be dry and the ground around it be wet. And then God, not only that, he had, to, he had to take this mighty man of valor, have him sneak down so he can overhear how afraid of him the other people were. Yet, he loved Gideon. Called him a mighty man of valor. He's no respect to persons. And you are his beloved. Glory. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get this, I'm starting to get this, this, feeling that this, this God, the God of creation, the mighty Yahweh, the, the, the God who sits high and looks low, cares about me enough that he would send his son on my behalf and then allow him to dwell in me, to take up residence in me, to allow me to be a temple, my body to be the temple of the Holy Ghost. Talk to me. Share things with me. On your behalf too. How much time I got, bro? Turn to John chapter 16. 20 minutes. Oh, okay. John chapter 16. We'll, 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 we'll do this and then we'll, uh, we'll stop after this. John chapter 16. We were there earlier, weren't we? Yep. Verse 23. And again, I'm still reading from the Brian Study Bible. It says, In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Truly, truly, I tell you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. There's a reason for that. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. Verse 25, he says, I've spoken these things to you in figures of speech. An hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you this way, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. Verse 27, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from him. Verse 27 again, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from Yahweh. I came from the Father, verse 28, and entered the world. In turn, I will leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said, see now you are speaking plainly and without figures of speech. Now we understand that you know all things and that you have no need for anyone to question you. Because of this, we believe that you came from Yahweh. Do you finally believe, Yeshua replied, look, an hour is coming, it's already come, and we will be scattered, each to his own home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I like verse 27 so much that I'm going to read it one more time. It says, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came from him or from God. He loves you. And so it's foundational that we understand that he loves us. It's foundational because the next verse says, in the world you will have tribulation, but the Father himself loves you. And not the next verse, but verse 33. In this world you will have tribulation. But take courage. Actually, I'm going to read verse 33. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In him you have peace. Being in relationship with him, you have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage. Because you're in him, having peace, you take courage because in him he has overcome the world. Think about that. You're in him who has overcome the world. 
You're in him because you love him. He's in you because you love him, because you believe he came from the Father. The Father loves you because you love him, because you believe that he came from the Father. But in him, you have peace. And in him, you can take courage, because in him, he's overcome the world. Why would he do all that? He says, because I love you. Because I love you. I want to be in relationship with you. I love you that I don't care if you're broken. I can fix you. See, he's not one of those people. He's not like some of us. We want people, like, you know, I heard a lady say, uh, she said, you can't clean fish before you catch them. You know, sometimes we want to clean people up before we catch them. You know, well, you got to do all these things, and then you come to church. Or people think they got to get clean. No, just come. So he can love you, so he can fix you. Well, no, not so he can. He does love you, but come to him so he can fix you. Because he already loves you. There's nothing you can do to make him love you more. Just like I said, there's never been anybody that ever lived that he didn't love. And there's nothing that anybody can do to make him love you more. Yeshua hadn't done anything when he says, this is my beloved. In him I'm well pleased. He hadn't even done anything yet. He hadn't started his ministry yet. Holy Spirit just showed up on him. Yet he, he was his beloved already. That's his love for you. Because he's no respecter of persons. And even if he was, Christ is in you. He's loving you anyway. He can't help. You know what I'm saying? Like you Just like if I made an omelet. I made an omelet. You can't unscramble that egg. Once Christ gets in there, he can't unscramble that he loves, he loves, Christ is his beloved. He's in you. He loves you. Say this, say, Yeshua loves me. Yeshua loves me. Yahweh loves me. Yahweh loves me. Yeah. The Ruach HaKadosh loves me. Ruach Once y'all done talking Spanish, I'll tell you what you just said. No, no, <laughs> no Jesus. But Father loves me, the Messiah loves me, and the Holy Spirit loves me. He really loves you. Now, you, now, your job as we go forward is to continue to remind yourself, no matter what situation you find yourself in, take courage. Like, so, you know, listen. Do you think, knowing that kind of love from, that my father has for me, that I, was, I would give up on him, like give up on, on him, his love? In other words, I know he loves me. And because he loves me, that's why I take my children before him in prayer. Every one of them. I take my daughter Jacqueline for her restoration because he loves me. Because I know he loves me. I take Drew before him. I take Christian before him. I take Adrian before him. I take Titus, our grandson. Elani, our granddaughter. I take El Shaddai, Christian Assembly, and your families before him. Man, I was praying in the spirit for everybody so much this morning that I couldn't go back to sleep. Bev's in the bathroom, I'm like, okay, I want to go to sleep. But I just couldn't stop praying in the spirit for a family, for a family, for all of you and your families. Oh, we, yeah, because um, intercession, like praying.